Uh, my name is Dan Crook. Um, I, am a, I am an enterprise architect uh, within Intel IT. Uh, so I'm not here to talk about chips or um, SSD drives that Intel produces. Those are all awesome. I'm in IT. Um, and we have a program at, at Intel called IT at Intel, where we go and we talk about uh, our experiences uh, in, in whatever it might be. In this case, it's our experiences with cloud and Cloud Foundry. Um, but there's also other topics. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about Intel IT, uh, there's a link um, at the end of the presentation that is available uh, on, uh, on the website for this session. Um, so you can find out more information. Uh, Intel IT uh, is pretty typical for a large enterprise, uh, enterprise uh, enter a large enterprise, a multinational corporation. Uh, we have roughly 6,000 IT employees, um, which if you think about it, wow, that's a lot of employ uh, you know, IT people in the department. Um, but we also have 106,000 Intel employees. Um, so, so it's a lot of uh, customers to, to provide service for. Um, our our uh, percentage of revenue spending on IT uh, is decreasing, and that's good from a CEO perspective. Hey, we're decreasing the costs, which is good, but it's also from an IT service provider perspective, it's a little scary. So now we're getting our budgets cut and cut, and now it's like, okay, how are we going to make this all work and still provide the service at a, at a, at a high level for our customers? Uh, we have uh, roughly 220,000 devices that we manage um, between uh, laptops, desktops, workstations, um, and uh, small four-factor devices. Uh, so there's a lot of devices to manage. Uh, we have uh, 163 uh, petabytes of storage that we, that we maintain within Intel IT. Uh, so it, it's a, you know, I'd say it's pretty standard for a large uh, corporation, but it is a pretty uh, complex environment. Uh, so this next slide, which you can't see, um, uh, is uh, just a lot of the things that I think we're all, if you're in IT or in the, you know, Silicon Valley, you, you're, you're experiencing these types of things. So things like uh, the cloud is real and disruptive, and it is. Um, the cybersecurity threats, um, DevOps, open standards, uh, multiple platform uh, applications, um, user experience, all this stuff is influencing uh, not only the vendors, but also IT departments. Um, so so uh, the one I'm going to focus on is uh, the cloud. Um, so let me just talk about an experience in, in my IT career when I wish I, I would have had something like a cloud um, uh, you know, to run. Uh, so about 17 years ago, I worked for a company uh, that was providing a, uh, a front end for a ticketing for a major league baseball team. So this was the Giants. Um, and uh, we had created this website. We thought it was you know, great. We got a heavy duty back end system. We're gonna be able to handle all the volume. Don't worry, it's, you know, we're gonna be fine. Um, and so you know, we put out a, you know, a release. Hey, you know, at this date and time, you're gonna be able to order your tickets for the season or whatever you want. And so you know, we're all ready. That point in time came and all of a sudden we were flooded with requests, HTTP requests, you know, login requests. And the system that we thought was so heavy and strong just went to its knees and, and it crashed. And we said, okay, well, let's just bring it back up. And we brought it back up and it just crashed again because of the volume. Um, and it's at that time when it would have been fantastic to have a hybrid cloud or some kind of cloud uh, workload distribution mechanism so I said, look, you know, in this point in time, I'm gonna have you know, a million requests for login. It would be great to be able to distribute that burst out into, into the public cloud or a private cloud. Um, but as it was, uh, we didn't have that option. So we did, we did it the old fashioned way. We, we, we gave them a date. We say, you can buy your tickets on Friday. We didn't give them a time. And so that way, things would happen more in a, if you're familiar with statistics, in a Poisson arrival, where things kind of happen in a natural way and that's how we got around it is, is you know, we, we, we didn't give it a point in time because if we did, it would happen again. So 
Um, the power of cloud is that you can start distributing your workloads. You can think about your IT workloads in a modular way, in a way that uh, in the past wasn't really possible. Oh, is, is it working? Or? Well, I'll try. Can I try it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep going. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what is hybrid cloud? So, hybrid cloud is the ability to, to if you have something like a burst of, of traffic or a, a workload, to be able to spin that out into a public cloud, for example, where, you know, for the short period of time, you know, if, if you're a major e-tailer, um, you know, if it's the, you know, Black Friday or whatever it is, you want to burst your workload for this particular point in time, um, you could do that in a hybrid cloud uh, scenario. Um, so Intel firmly believes that hybrid cloud is the future. Um, oh, cool. Oh. So there we go for you. Oh, okay. So that's far as you can go. So it's like forward to reverse, and yeah. that's a laser pointer right there. Yeah, we, oh. got, yeah. we got the Wizard of Oz back there behind the curtain trying to. Okay. Got all kinds of issues here. Can that I working? see it? Do I have to oh, get, get closer? Yeah. Oh, hang on. It's right on. That, that might help. Okay. There we go. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Question. Yeah, no problem. Okay, um, so, so hybrid cloud. Um, so the research tells us that roughly 60% of IT decision makers are looking um, at some point to move to the hybrid cloud, which is kind of the, the, the end all be all as we see it um, of, of the cloud strategy. Um, and that 70% 70 of US organizations are considering it in the next 24 months, which is pretty soon. Um, where are we at right now, generally speaking, from a industry perspective? 82% uh, uh, of organizations have a multi-cloud strategy. Uh, so multi-cloud is, uh, is where you might have a private cloud, maybe running on Cloud Foundry. Um, uh, you might have infrastructure as a service, but you also might have SaaS cloud vendors, right, that you're using. And so most people, and this is where Intel is today, is really in kind of this multi-cloud uh, area um, where we're, we're leveraging the cloud in SaaS. We have a private cloud, a successful private cloud based on Cloud Foundry, um, but you know, we're not at the hybrid cloud um, yet, um, but hopefully we'll get there. The hybrid architecture, as, as, um, as seen here, uh, is, is you know, all of the vectors are going in the right direction. Lower cost, higher developer satisfaction, uh, improved scalability and res resiliency. Um, all that stuff is heading in the, in the right direction. Uh, so what Intel was faced with was, you know, Intel's been around for, for a number of years, and we've built up a, a huge capability uh, of software and applications and capabilities in our data center. Uh, so the question that we had to ask ourselves was, okay, we have all this stuff running internally. What of any of this stuff is gonna make sense to put into, you know, a cloud offering, whether it be private or whether it be a SaaS vendor or public cloud. Um, and so what we did is we did an analysis. Um, right? So we did an analysis. We looked at it from several different perspectives. And we looked at it from business considerations, um, you know, ag agility time to market, the TCO. There's also techno technical considerations of the workload you're talking about performance, integration, and data size. And there's also ecosystem considerations. The maturity of the SaaS offerings, um, how stable they are, how mature they are, how well-funded they are, et cetera. Uh, so, so these are the kind of categories that we, that we started this analysis with. Uh, and we specifically went, and I'll talk through a little bit about the, the, tech, the tech, technical um, considerations. Uh, so in the technical consideration space, uh, in the performance vector, uh, public cloud, if you, if you have unpredictable and dynamic workloads, public cloud's a great place to go. If, if in the security, if you don't have a lot of security expertise in-house, um, public cloud is, is, is a good way to go. If you, have, um, if you don't have a lot of dependencies on your back-end systems, um, then public cloud is, is, is you know, a way to, 
you know, a way to go to, to save costs. Um, and if you don't have a ton of data volumes, um, uh, and and you know the, and it's maybe it might it, well it might be a large data set, but you don't access the, that often, like uh, backup recovery things like that. That would be you know make sense in the in the public cloud. In the private cloud, and this is where you know Cloud Foundry at Intel plays. Um, if you have applications that are latent latent sensitive, um, you you need responses back from your applications. Um, and, and sub-seconds. Um, you need to control the access to the data. Maybe it's very sensitive data, financial data, um, uh, things like that. You definitely want to consider a private cloud. If you have uh, high-risk data, if this data got into the public hands or into the wrong hands, maybe it's a circuit design um, that you know, is proprietary, that's highly valuable, a patent, or something like that. Stuff like that, we think you probably want to keep it in-house, in, in, a, in a private cloud scenario. Um, in the integration space, if you have um, dependent systems that don't have open APIs, um, or that you have a lot of APIs that you have to call into internal systems, uh, you're probably going to want to do that in the private cloud. And then if you have significant data volumes, financial, industrial, and others, um, that would point to the private cloud as well. And so what we did is we, we took all of the different applications and workloads at Intel, and we analyzed them and rated them um, in these different areas. And so this is what you see from an affinity of work, workload placement. So starting over here, things where you, a generic web server, CRM, email, web search, this stuff on this end of the spectrum made sense for us to look at moving off-premise into a SaaS, a SaaS cloud, cloud offering. On the far right-hand corner, you have financial data, you have R&D, you have you know, national or industrial security. This kind of stuff is stuff that you would, or what we said, look, this is the stuff we want to keep you know, close to our vest and, and we want to, you know, um, either on-prem, on servers, or in an internal cloud. And the stuff in the middle is the, uh, is the stuff that, you, that we needed to look at individually. It's not an easy answer, right? The, I think the, the far left and the far right here are the easy answers. And in the middle is you have to really look at, at what are these applications doing? What are these capabilities doing? Um, in the ERP space, maybe you don't move your entire ERP into the cloud, but maybe you move pieces. Um, and so this is what our findings uh, were. So I'm sharing that here. So I'm uh, going to give a couple of use cases. I'm going to focus on the, the items that um, or the use cases that Cloud Foundry is based, that we, that uh, the use cases that use Cloud Foundry, um, because this is the Cloud Foundry conference. We have a lot of other use cases for cloud, but I wanted to focus on just the ones for Cloud Foundry. Uh, so. Before I get to that, uh, one of the key things, and I think I've heard it multiple times at this conference, is self-service is the key. Um, I'm from the developer world, um, and uh, it, you know, sometimes developers and systems engineers you know, may not always see eye to eye on things. Um, it reminds me of the Seinfeld soup guy, where you, you go to him and say, hey, can I please have, have a server? He says, no server for you. Um, that's the way you kind of feel as a developer. You're like, hey, I just want to do my job. I want to develop this capability. And the system engineers are always grumpy, and they, got, you know, they don't want to talk to you. So self-service is, is a key to enabling this whole experience um, with, with the inter internal cloud. So we have uh, internal uh, cloud app platform. So this is based on Cloud Foundry. We have a database as a service uh, offering, and then we have an inf infrastructure as a service offering. Um, where if you need, you know, if you actually need a VM with a lot more control, then, then we have that offering. Uh, and, and, you know, when we looked at, when we analyzed, um, oops, when we analyzed the private versus public cloud, um, I don't know why that's doing that. Um, what you see here is, you know, you, you're moving to the cloud, Moving to the cloud, you're going to see your cost decrease, which is awesome. But what we actually saw is that um, the, the cost decrease was even more with the private cloud, which was a little surprising because you would think, hey, you know, public cloud, 
you know, uh, it would, you would see more cost savings, but we actually saw more cost savings in the private cloud, which is a little bit surprising. Um, this uh, scenario is, is a, a project uh, that I actually worked on very closely. Um, so, and I gave a, an entire session earlier today on this capability, um, just a, the, the short synopsis. Um, about three years ago, we had actually had two uh, enterprise mobile platforms, um, and they were very complex and costly. And you know, we decided to EOL both of them and actually move to a Cloud Foundry runtime um, for things like it, your mobile browser and for push notifications. Um, and and it, was, it was, in my mind, it was a leap of faith um, because I was very used to coming from an enterprise IT software background. The vendor, it's a very nice thing to be able to call the vendor and complain to them where now you're, you're kind of the software vendor and they're gonna get the complaints and you have no one to talk to because now it's your software. So it was a little bit scary, to be honest. Um, but uh, we went ahead with it, and it has been a, a great success, in my opinion. Um, we've been in production for three years. Um, we've seen a 50% reduction in our environment uh, complexity. So we went down from two systems to one. Um, we've reduced our hardware footprint by 90%. Um, and the, it used to take you know, 20 weeks to, to develop a mobile application on these other platforms. And the way we've moved to open source and Cloud Foundry, we can now do that in about three weeks and even shorter if it's extremely important. Um, so, so huge win in the, in the mobile space for, for Intel IT. And this next one is with open source. Um, one thing that we are very aware of is, uh, you know, you, with open source, when you say open source, it's a huge category of software. There's anything from a little JavaScript library that's 10 lines long to millions of lines of code is all open source. And so you have to be cognizant and mindful when you look at adopting open source and, and ensure that it's legal for you to use at your company, um, that it is secure. Um, and so what we did is we actually created a catalog uh, on top of Cloud Foundry, where we list all of the approved libraries, open source libraries, components um, uh, that, are, that have been pre-approved for use from a legal perspective, pre-approved for use from a, from a, um, a security perspective. Um, and, it's, and, and there's documentation on, on how it's actually to be used within Intel. Uh, so so we, we stood up this, uh, this open source catalog. Uh, we have several hundred users. Uh, dispersed across the, the globe, um, uh, it, it, and it enables Intel to be uh, secure and legally compliant, because uh, the last thing you want to do is get into legal troubles with, um, you know, software licensing. Um, so the, the takeaway that, that I would hope that you would have from this is cloud technologies, whatever they might be, um, accelerate your business. Uh, focus on both the infrastructure and ap application transformation. Look, look at your workloads and analyze them and see what's best for your company. Um, look at them in the vectors that we had or make up your own vectors. But, but do a mindful approach to determining what you want to keep in-house and what you want to put on your private cloud in-house and what you want to put out into the public cloud and what you want to use SaaS vendors for. Um, do a, my recommendation would be to to do a mindful approach, and um, I think that's, uh, that's the main takeaway there. We believe the future is the hybrid cloud. Um, we've been using Cloud Foundry now since 2014, um, and it's, we've seen a, a great adoption, and we're actually a part of the Cloud Foundry uh, Foundation. Uh, we're con a contributing member, um, and if you have any questions about Intel at IT, there's a, uh, you can click that link on the presentation, and also some more information about the, uh, the cloud um, at Intel. So I think that is it. Um, so that is the presentation. I apologize for the delay um, that we had some technical difficulties, but uh, thanks for sticking with me to the very end of the, the conference. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to come up to me afterwards. I'll be around for a, little, a few minutes, um, but thank you for coming.